Hello there, Jim Townsend. My website's at townsend.b. Uh, this is a reply to Tozak. He um, asked me about uh, how the gold confiscation is going to play out. Uh, so I guess I should say good day, Mike. <laughs> um, gold confiscation. You need to understand a little bit about the stock market. Now, the stock market is a con game. Okay, now it's based upon what you have to understand is the world is run by global bankers and the way that they are planning on ruling the world is by kiting checks in order to own it. You see they put ink to paper and um, if you can put ink to paper and buy up everything and then that paper system crashes and bam everybody's left holding the bag but you still own all your property. Okay so that's key to what's going on. All a banker does is takes ink, splashes it on paper, and trades it for all of uh, your assets. He trades his liabilities for your assets. Writes you all these IOUs, you end up with these IOUs that are worthless, and you lose everything. Now, if you have a system that has legitimate real money, I'm talking about gold, silver, and co copper coin, okay, that is minted that system cannot be debauched, okay, because it represents assets, okay. Money is not a medium of exchange, okay. A banker's liability debt instrument IOU is a medium of exchange. Whenever you exchange valuable money for valuable um, goods or valuable services, what you are doing in effect is called a barter exchange. You're exchanging barter for barter. Okay, so money is not a medium of exchange, it is an exchange. Keep that in your mind. So when you have a real money system, <clears throat> you can actually save that real money and you can put it in your mattress. And that's not a problem. It will maintain its value. Take it out of your mattress and you put it into a bank, you're going to lose it. The banker's going to give you an IOU and you will never see your real money again in the botch it. Now, when you have a legitimate business, and that legitimate business has legitimate assets and everything else, and perhaps the fellow needs more money for carrying on commerce because he doesn't want to walk around with a whole pile of motors trading them off or something like that. Now, one of the ways that he can finance himself is to get an investment in that stock. So you come along and you say, all right, I'd like to invest in your stock. And then when you sell it, I'll get a percentage of it. You see, that is a legitimate way of doing business. You have to understand where profit comes from. Now, you see, only one thing ever creates profit, and that's labor. Because if you take all of your um, all of your resources and you put them all in piles, those resources sit there. They're a fixed cost. You've paid for them. They don't do anything until you take that labor and you build something with it. Now. When a manufacturer hires a group of laborers to build something for them, what they are doing is they are <coughs> adding value to that resource with their labor and they're um, creating a product. So the value that they've added on there onto that uh, product is the price that you can sell it for. Okay, now here's the thing. The profit to the manufacturer is the amount that he does not pay that person for the value that they've added to it, okay, which means that all profit comes from labor, okay. Perfectly legitimate thing to do as well. You want to sell your labor to somebody rather than making the products yourself, you go right ahead and you should pay something for that man to have his time to do things as well, okay, but profit always comes from labor. So we have this legitimate business that has its stock. It wants to get some investments in, into this so that it can go out, do a little bit of marketing and sell this, and then it's going to recompense um, uh, uh, the people that have invested into this out of that profit base that's accruing. Now we get the phony money comes into the system, okay? Somebody with an IOU goes in, buys it, uh, buys it up, but now there's nothing to back that. IOU. So you've already debauched the, the, the whole thing by allowing that phony money to come in as well. The stock market is an entire scam because there are very few stocks that you can buy that are actually represented by assets. Most of it is just paper and that's why the stock market crashes periodically and everybody that has the paper 
gets left holding the bag. So, if I want to, if you have money, you can make money. So I have some paper money. So here's my corporation that I'm going to form. I take a million dollars of paper money and I put it into that corporation and I have an idea. I'm going to build something. It's just an idea. So I form a corporation, I write a corporate constitution and all that other sort of stuff. I get some uh, A, B, and C stocks. I got uh, uh, preferred shares, non-preferred uh, shares, and all that other sort of stuff. Okay, so the first thing that I do, I got my million dollars in there, and then I go see a couple of my friends, and I say, hey, would you like in on this uh, new company that I'm now uh, starting? We're going to make ourselves a fortune. And he says, yeah, yeah. You know, so I got three friends, they each throw in a quarter million dollars, right? So now... I've got three quarter of a million dollars back already. So now the four of us have a quarter million invested in, in, into this. We're going to sit on the board of directors. Okay, now we're going to look for somebody to run the company. So we go out and we talk to some other people, see if they want to invest. Well, yeah, here's a guy who wants to be president of the company. And he's going to give you a quarter of a million dollars to, uh, 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 to buy in on that. And he's going to get some... Uh, uh, class B shares or something uh, like that, right? So you get these people who want to be principals in the company and all, and they're not wise to how the scam works, right? They're legitimately investing. Well, by the time that we have the corporation set up with our principals and stuff like that, we, the people that have put up the money in the first place, already have our money back out. So now we're playing with other people's money. Well, we've got to acquire land. Well, we take other people's money and oh, Geez, I just happen to have a piece of property over here. I paid twenty thousand dollars for perfect location for our new business, a million bucks. Ooh, nice way to stuff some money in your pocket. You see, it's theft, and you know it's theft. You can feel it in your guts that it's theft. And every little action like that steals from absolutely everybody in the economy, right? Which is why at first it really kind of doesn't go notice, right? because you can still use this paper money and buy things and buys, buys stuff, but pretty soon it doesn't buy as much. Okay, so now we've got all of our money out. We're using other people's money. We got this business off the, off the go, and it's uh, uh, starting to go. Now we want to get some investment from the public. So now we offer a public share offering, and it goes out onto the, on, onto the stock market. Everybody, wow, hey, new, new business on the go, right? What you want to do is look for these new businesses. We've got shysters that pull this game all the time. Just analyze the stock. Watch who's starting the businesses and everything and how, how they're doing it, how long their uh, companies are in business. Get right in on the bottom floor and get out within a month or two. And you'll make money on the thing, right? Because you know it's going to crash and people that uh, um, are, are going to get uh, caught on it are the suckers holding the bag on the end. And by the way, that's already passed, okay? Everybody that uh, had the, the smart big money got out of the stock market a long time ago, okay? So it's all the little mom and pops in, uh, in, in uh, the, the Commonwealth nations that are going to get uh, burned next. So at any rate, we have our corporation here. And now we got this public uh, uh, um, shares. So everybody's buying into this thing. And uh, everybody working for the company is uh, doing great, you know, like they've gotten their money back out of it. And now uh, uh, their stock prices are going up and all that other sort of stuff. And people that started the business know that this isn't going to last. So now they start, start selling off all their shares. All their shares are gone. All of a sudden, oh, oh you know, companies have become inst unstable or whatever. But you can also take this company, which is just fueled by paper. There's nothing behind it can't trade it for stocks in legitimate companies and that waters down the value of, uh, of the legitimate company because now it is no longer has a solid asset base it's got all of this paper stock and that's how good um, uh, companies end up crashing because of bad money coming into them so I hope you understand that the stock market is a scam you know in the last depression whenever they crashed the stock market the fancy uh, paper money was nothing but fire starter. Put a single, a single dollar of silver to feed your family for a week. Well, now we no longer have that silver and gold coins to fall back in here in Canada. This is called a toonie. This is a two-dollar coin. We also have a one-dollar coin called a loony, loony toonies, loony toons, and it's funny money. You know, somebody had a sense of uh, uh, of humor with this stuff. The bad thing is, 
we're only going to have uh, a fancy fire starter this time around and tiddly winks that aren't going to buy any, anything for anybody. Collect your gold, yes. Collect your silver, yes. But also um, make sure that you hang on to your uh, copper coins. Now, Tozak, I'm, I, I've run out of my 10 minutes here, so I'm going to make another video and we're going to go on to the gold confiscation now that you understand the stock market part of it. Peace, y'all. Love you. Take care.